Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. You know, we talk so much about entrepreneurship on the show and growing your business, but one thing we've only touched on a little bit is how relationships can influence your business and your life in general. If you are in a place where you're struggling with a relationship or you're lacking intimacy with yourself or your spouse, you it can affect how you feel, how you think, and ultimately result in making different decisions, maybe not as positive decisions as what need you need to do in order to move your business forward. So we're going to talk about how intimacy plays an impact, has an effect on your business as well as your personal life. And we're going to dive into how you can increase that level of intimacy, both with yourself as well as your spouse. Today's guest is Dr. April Brown. She is a Florida resident, and I am so excited to have her with with me. She's a beautiful soul. I've been stalking her a little bit, and I think you guys are going to love her. So without further ado, Dr. April Brown, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I love um, being an entrepreneur, talking about it, and I love um, talking about intimacy. So this is great. That's awesome. So before we dive into our conversation, will you tell the listeners a little bit about your journey to get to where you are today? Oh, okay. Yes, yes. So um, when I started off in life of trying to, you know, work in that kind of decision, I started off as a um, an accountant working with numbers. Yes, and that because I'm good with numbers. Um, but it was the same old thing back and forth or whatever. And then um, through just taking time with myself, um, I felt a calling. And that intimacy in the sense with my higher power told me to do something different. And I trusted it, which led me into this whole counseling aspect. Um, I started off working with schools and with kids. And then I later on went into full-time private practice, which is what I am right now. And in that, um, I felt like my higher power told me to really talk about intimacy because we've lost connection. You know, not only, of course, with the higher power, but with ourselves. And especially as women, sometimes we get so busy doing so many other things that we don't take care of ourselves. And then we've also lost connection with others. And so that's kind of what my message is, is helping people connect and helping families and partnerships and relationships have a stronger bond. I love that. And you approach, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, because I've heard you on other shows, you approach your you approach intimacy from the Christian perspective and how intimate intimacy starts with our relationship with Jesus. And then we bring that intimacy into our personal lives. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Jesus is from my own perspective, of course, but I know that other people prescribe to other things, which is fine, but it's that intimacy you're right with your higher power. Yeah. Yeah. That intimacy yeah. with yourself and intimacy with your loved ones and the people you connect with. It's being truly present because psychologically, medically, um, spiritually, they all say the same thing. They want you to be truly present. Yeah, and it's hard to be present when we have so many different things coming at us, so many distractions. And I focus on growing businesses without social media. And really creating strategies, marketing strategies that are long-term, you know, to help build that limitless earning potential for the rest of your life and the rest of the duration of your business so that you have that sustainability. But intimacy, I think you said it's lacking in a lot of ways. And I think social media is one of those distractions where we see so many people doing so many things and we think, well, I want that, but we can't all have the same thing. And so I, I love that you say that, you know, we've, we've lost touch with that personal connection. And I think so much of that is because of our devices and always looking at what everyone else is doing. And then we lose sight of that intimacy within our own self and our own relationships, looking for maybe the greener grass on the other side of the fence, so to speak. Right, right, exactly. Um, because what's good for you may not be good for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And even when you think about entrepreneurship, or even, because um, I help 
other therapists have their private practice and stuff. And so many times we all look, there are people that look at other people as competition. Yeah. You know, and they don't share their resources when in reality we should. Mm -hmm. Because that yeah. makes a greater um, business, even in the field that you're in. If you have mm -hmm. strong connections with people that kind of may do the same thing that you do, you know, because you never know who's going to need what. It's about having that connection. Well, and, and knowing yourself. It, absolutely. And when we talk about relationships in business, we're talking about, yes, there are going to be competitors, but if we didn't have competitors, there wouldn't be a there wouldn't be an ecosystem for business. Exactly. And so we need healthy competition, but it's yeah. the healthy part and it's building relationships and holding people up, sharing your expertise, guiding other people when, and, and I love to say this because we are so unique and we all have our own individual callings that it doesn't matter what somebody else is doing because you right. can build that intimate connection with the people you're meant to serve, the people you're exactly. called to serve. And other people are called to serve other people and use their unique gifts to help those people. Right. So there's always enough work to go around. So exactly. it's, I love that you're saying that, but I think that's an important part of relationship building as entrepreneurs to take that step back and not look at what other people are doing and right. focus on what God's calling you to do and really focus on that the intimacy, like with the Holy Spirit. So you can hear him communicate to you like, right. okay, here's what I'm calling you to do. And here's the next positive action step that you can take. So I feel like I've kind of monopolized the conversation. So I want to give the floor to you. And I would love for you to talk about both the, the intimacy with self and the importance mm -hmm. that, that plays and how we establish that. And then the relationships and intimacy with say, other people in our lives, our spouses, and how we can reconnect and have that intimacy on a deeper level. Right. So with self, one of the important things, and as she mentioned, the higher power in God, is that many times people just pray. They talk to God and they just say all this stuff, tell God about all their problems, stuff, which is great and all that. But to be truly intimate, it's also to listen. Hear what he's saying back not just say your problems and walk and drop the mic but here and people say well yeah well, I could tell him about you know big things such as cancer but I'm not going to pray about what marketing strategy I use or if I should hire this person and you should when it comes yeah it's every everything you know and he leads me into a variety of things so I think that's really important and also it's important to even ask him who are you because many times we forget who we are. And also with that intimacy with self, um, which is very, 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 very important, is you shouldn't never say anything negative about yourself. Because you're going to be with yourself for the rest of your life. You can't divorce you or whatever. The world may talk about you, whatever the case. You have to truly love yourself. And in all the commandments and all the religion, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. So that is extremely, extremely important. And so, and people will treat you the way you treat yourself. So as women, as we go and try to do everything else, but we don't take care of self, that's important. Because I, and I'm a Christian, so I'm just going to talk from a Jesus perspective. Even Jesus took time for himself. Mm -hmm. So as an entrepreneur, it's so important for you to make sure you take time for yourself. Mm -hmm. You work. You rest, you play, you work, you rest, you play. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. And in taking time for yourself, that's when you get energy to connect. Because if you don't have energy and you just wear yourself out, I'm going to switch over to the next part. Then you're not going to have energy for your partner. You know, and that is, you need that. You know, so that intimate connection with your partner and even with your kids, with, your co-workers stuff requires you to have good self-intimacy to know yourself to know your boundaries don't let any other people define you to have energy and to be truly present and when I talk about being truly present I mean as we're talking right now I'm here I'm not thinking about you know what happens you know 10 hours from now being truly present because that's all 
we can handle. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, unless you've got the gift of, I don't know, uh, prophecy or whatever. <laughs> but most of us don't. 99% of us don't. Yes, yeah. When you're truly, truly present. And one easy tip when you're like, you find your mind distracted and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't, it's to use your five senses. That's what we have them for. You know, look around, uh, you know, find five things you can see, four things you can touch, hear, smell. Do this if you're washing dishes, that's what you focus on. If you're um, with your husband and you guys are having a passionate moment, <laughs> that's what you focus on. It's being truly present. So do you have exercises that people can do to, I guess, how do, how do you go from this place of the hustle mentality almost, right? Especially as moms, like we're shuttling our kids places, we're checking on, you know, dates and sports teams and every, you know, little detail, the laundry, the, the cleaning, the cooking, all of these things. And then at the end of the day, we're supposed to connect with our spouse, like, so how can we get all those other things out of our mind to focus solely on that and be present in that moment? Do you have advice on that? Yes, yes. So that's kind of what I was talking about being fully present is is finding, um, using your five senses when your uh-huh. mind goes all over the place is, is one advice. The second advice is sometimes we, um, when we come home, sometimes we need a transition. Um, whether that is to take a shower, whether that is to from transition from work to home. Right, right. You know, whether that is to take, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes and go outside and plant some flowers, we need a transition so that we can um, let go of what's over there and focus on what's in front of you. You have to think about it as you're always where you should be. Mm, I love that. Yeah, Jesus never, and I'm going to just talk about Jesus, but um, <laughs> most we of love prophets, Jesus here. So that's great. <laughs> you go right ahead. Yes. <laughs> but most of the prophets and the other religions, the same thing. Um, they didn't run around, they walked. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And so for us, we got to learn how to walk. So sometimes if things happen not the way I plan, I have to let, I have to just go with the flow. You know, mm-hmm. nothing in this world is perfect. And I know you you understand that, but many people don't. And they try to make their kid's life perfect, everything perfect, dinner perfect, whatever. But every tree, everything has a bed. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what makes this world so. So as a female, like I said, it's also slowing down. Um, number two thing, it's okay to ask for help. You know, as entrepreneurs, we try to put everything on our shoulder and we don't ask for help or we don't even ask people to do anything. Yeah, I was talking with this woman and or this married couple and she's busy doing everything and they were arguing about washing dishes and they have four teenagers. And I'm like, <laughs> why are you even washing dishes? I didn't even understand that aspect. <laughs> It's okay to ask for help and it's okay to get your kids to do things and practice, you know, it's good for them to do things. Yeah. 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 That was, you know, that's one of my memories as a child. Like we had to do the dishes and when we were growing up, it wasn't until we were adults that my parents got a dishwasher. So we had to hand wash the dishes and we would argue over who got to wash or dry, you know, because washing was more fun than drying because then you had to put away too. (laughs) Right, right, right. And then intimacy should not feel like a chore. Mm. You know, when you're truly intimate with your partner, it's, and I'm talking about sexual intimacy now, it really should just be like a playground where you're just playing. And I don't know if you remember when you were younger and you were playing, you just had this creative thing. You were really enjoying it. You were laughing, smiling, just enjoying the person you're playing with. That's all you were focused on. We've lost that. You know, it's so funny that you say this. It's actually not funny, but you know what I'm, what I mean is we, you watch movies, TV shows, 
And right. everything's so serious. Like sex is always portrayed as this, like just heat, you know, right. like serious, like, you know, all this passion right. just coming out. But I love that you put that perspective on it, that it, it should be playful. It should be right. joyful. It should be right. fun. Yeah. Right. Right. Too many people worried about um, orgasms or others or performance, you know, uh, performance anxiety or whatever, instead of just playing. But we get in our minds that maybe our body doesn't look right, this or that, but we should just play. And everything else will happen if we just play. Yeah, I love that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we're, if we're feeling, um, this is, it's, this is kind of a hard conversation for me to have. I like, I'm not sure exactly how to lead this conversation, which is so rare for me because I'm usually like, so on, but this is like one of those, like more like intimate, vulnerable conversations. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to think like as a woman, some of the thoughts or perspectives, like I've heard my friends talk about or whatever, but So say we're in that place where it does feel like a chore. How do we switch our mindset around it to be more playful and be more present? I mean, obviously the senses and some of those things where we focus solely on that moment, but when, you know, so many of us, it's like, and especially I think women over 50, I hear say this more and more, or even like late forties where it's like, oh, it's just not the same. And uh, now it's just another to do thing on my to-do list. Like I've heard that said so many times, it's just another thing on my to-do list. So how do we, how do you recommend we switch that mindset around how we approach intimacy, sexual intimacy? Right, right. So women in in your fifties and I'm in my fifties. Okay. Um, Number one, menopause is real. (laughs) okay yes yes and in some countries they actually you know give us more time off and more time so number one if you feel like you're going through extra tiredness you feel vaginal dryness you have hot sweat or you're losing hair make sure you check yourself out talk to your doctor because it is real i don't want you to think that it's it's not real um yes because number one it does take energy and it does take where you feel good about yourself Okay, so that's that's number one. Number two is <clears throat> some of these things can be relieved a little bit or relieved a lot or whatever the case may be by having proper, <laughs> eating properly and exercising and working out. Okay, because when you um, work out, even in the sense of anxiety and depression, that working out helps those, those uh-huh. things because you've got to feel good about yourself. Yeah. And yeah. it releases all the positive endorphins too. And those positive right. chemicals that we need for that energy and for, for just simply feeling right. human right. and good. Right. Yeah. Right. Number three is um, you're at a different stage in life. So what you liked when you were 20 may be totally different now. And you may need to speak up. You know, on, on average, it takes at least 20, 25 minutes to warm up a female's body. You know, so if you've just been um, sitting there or laying there, whatever the case may be, and not speaking up to your partner, he's a man, he doesn't, he doesn't know, he doesn't understand. Yeah. Explain it to him, talk to him. And these conversations do need to happen outside of the bedroom. Okay. Because sometimes the bedroom becomes this, which I don't want it to become a pressure cooker. Yeah. Have these conversations. And if you need help, I mean, this resources and stuff to help but yeah there's different things and maybe you like things slowing down you like music you did try a variety of different things you got to see what you like and sometimes that even means understanding your own body many people or many women have not even looked at their own body touched their own body so they have no idea how to really enjoyed or explained to their husband. Mm-hmm. And the husband, the man isn't automatically supposed to know. Yeah, yeah. I could see that too. And I think men have such a different perspective of everything's just faster. Right. Like it's like, I think as women, we need that, we need more of that 
physical connection on a deeper level. Right. Where like we see it as something different than I think men see it oftentimes. Not all men, right, right, but right, I think right, right. generally speaking. Right. Men are usually, some of them, not all, of course, are very visual. So mm-hmm. they get excited about tits and boobs and all that. <laughs> women, <laughs> women, we're emotional beings. Yeah. 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 So for some women, when you, um, you know, fix all the kids' lunches, you know, that may get get as women very excited you know when you help out when the guy helps out at the house or when you're there holding her you know um listening to her you know that's what it's that emotional piece but they're also like you said there needs to be conversations you know because sometimes a man feels oh something isn't going right so he'll go and get viagra or whatever without a discussion <laughs> Yes, yeah, I've heard yes. I've heard people saying this. Yes, as, yes, as we get older, i do you know what I found in our closet? <laughs> yes, 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 which makes them even go, you know, very, you know, faster or whatever the case may be. Yes, yeah. And you you guys haven't had that discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So really, and someone told me one time, um, it was happened to be a divorce attorney, and I said, So what do you think the number one cause of divorce is? And he said, communication. So what you're saying is that is basically the same thing, that communication is the key here so that we're on the same page. But I think when we're not communicating, like the example you just gave with the Viagra, that can become a trust factor then. Like, well, right, you right, tell right. me about this. So why do you need that? Are you using that for somebody else? Like I could see these conversations kind of right. spiraling out of control if you don't have that trust. And I think trust is a part of intimacy. Exactly. Exactly. In, in fact, the number one reason why couples get separated and divorced, um, it's more than just communication. It's really what Mother Teresa talked about. It's loneliness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's where you have two people in a relationship and loneliness is different than being alone. Okay. <laughs> loneliness is when you have two people and they're not connecting. They feel very, very alone. Yeah. So it's not only just, you know, this person got fried going, we don't know, you know, you may think, oh my gosh, is he doing it for me? But also he may be speeding up and your body's slowing down. Do you understand how just yeah. that right there? Just, yeah. But not really truly sitting down and communicating and talking and walking through things. So let me ask you this. Do you have suggestions for people? Like if the listeners are sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, this is us. Like I feel lonely or we don't communicate. How how do they initiate that conversation to, to get this ball rolling so that they can be more intimate and can and have that baseline connection to start moving forward to grow the intimacy again? Right. So of course we've talked about, or people know that, you know, they should do date nights. And have dates, yes, which is which is great. And when you're on a date, you shouldn't talk about problems or finances or children. But you should also have time where you do check-ins. Where you and your partner, you and your husband, your spouse, talk. Have those real conversation. And let's say it's hard for us to talk. It's just, I get so emotional or whatever. A good thing to do is have both of you have some paper around. Um, Maybe put a timer on for two minutes or whatever. One person talks. And when you talk, you talk about from I feel. I feel I need, I want. The other person that's listening, write. Because if you're writing, and it helps you to truly hear your partner if you're taking notes. Versus... um, just responding and not even hearing, you know? It's that then listening I, that you mentioned back at the very beginning to listen. Yes, it's that active listening. Yes. Yeah. And when you're writing and then after that person talks to you, ask open any questions of to understand from that person's point of view. Yeah. And then you can, you know, of course, it's really good to validate. Um, a person's feeling is their feeling. That's 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 the truth. It's their feeling. It's it's 
it's not, um, you know, like the color of, a, of the sky. A person's feelings are true feelings. So don't argue about a person's feelings. Yeah. You validate, you summarize, and then you flip it. But it's really good some time to take notes because then you really can hear the other person. All right. Yeah, I like that. That's a great exercise. And I, I think too, um, sometimes, like you just said, don't argue about the feelings. I think sometimes, and I mean, this has happened in, in you know, some of my relationships too, where someone like you can say you're feeling, but then someone else interprets it that as you're putting blame on them. Mm -hmm. And that can be, you know, blame leads to shame. So if this is happening a lot, that can really hurt the relationship. Do you right. have, how do you, how do you approach that? How do how do you suggest, like, if you're, you know, you're, you have been feeling this lack of communication, this lack of connection, this loneliness, you sit down to initiate this with your spouse. And then all of a sudden they're saying, well, what you're telling me I did this wrong. So how do you, how do you address that? I know we had um, Deborah Roberts on not too long ago. And she talked, we, she talked about having difficult conversations with people but we really didn't talk about this type of conversation. So I would love your perspective on that. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes what happens is couples or people get flooded. And what I mean flooded is that emotional piece comes up here to our head and we just start spilling our stuff. We're not really hearing. We can't hear when we're flooded. Okay. So one of the first things I do when I work with couples is helping each person understand when they get upset. What does it feel like in your body? I talk with each person, what does it feel like? And then I also ask the partner, what does it look like? You know what I'm saying? Do, do you know what it looks like um, from an outside perspective when you start to get upset? Do you know what it feels like, okay? So as we understand this concept here, then sometimes when we start to get upset and we know that we're getting upset, it's okay to take a time out just like they do um, in American football or basketball, where we go and we calm ourselves down. Because sometimes as women, we get so flooded, we spill out everything. And we're like, the man is just sitting there and maybe he may need time to process. And we get more upset, you know. So if we take a time out, we calm ourselves down um, because you're, when it comes to entrepreneurship or everything else, your number one client, especially if you're married or you're in a serious relationship, is really your partner, your spouse. That's where you need to show your number one customer service. Uh -huh. Because that person is with you, you know, for life. Uh -huh. So just like you wouldn't be, you know, yelling and screaming at a <laughs> at your client because you're, you know, afraid you're going to lose all this money. <laughs> Yeah, you go and you wash your face off or you go to the bathroom, you calm yourself down or you start typing in an email, you delete it. Yeah, maybe you might need to do that same process to calm yourself down before you communicate with your partner. Does yeah, yeah, no, I think that's great advice. Yeah, it's it's like when you're, when you're dealing with your children, throwing temper yeah. tantrums and you have to yeah. say, okay, we're going to have a time out here and then we'll talk about this when you are able to calm down and have, have a real conversation with mommy, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's the same things, but I think as adults, we're like, no, I, I just have to handle this and move on. But I think a lot of times, and especially, you know, I did a, a blog post and I think I did a podcast episode too, um, on like anxiety is not an excuse. Right. And anxiety is, I mean, more and more prevalent now, as right. you know, exactly. and I think oftentimes with relationships too, and, and I'm sure you see this, I would love your perspective on this, is that it, that anxiety comes into play and immediately the person feels attacked instead of sitting in the moment to have that conversation. And I, I witnessed this growing up. This is kind of how my my father would react. And right. you know, instead of like that anxiety just overcomes and then they react instead of being present and having the conversations. And I would, I'd love your perspective on that. Like if you're, if you're in a relationship where that happens, how do you bring that other person to see that it's not an attack, 
their anxiety doesn't have to elevate. It's just a conversation. How do you approach that? Right, right. So um, how I would approach it is sometimes even calling a timeout for myself. Because that's different. Calling a timeout is different than walking off. You know, many people just walk off and say <laughs> a bad word and they walk off. Yeah. And then that other person's like, it's so anxious, like, no, 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 don't you walk away from yada, yada. But if you were to say, I love this relationship so much, I'm getting myself upset and I don't want to say something I will have to take back. I'm going to take a time out for myself just to calm myself so I can come back and truly hear you. And we you can know, even do yeah. this with, um, as you're thinking with them, um, you said young people, like when you're disciplining your kid and maybe you have a teenager who goes whatever and you're like, ah, yeah. before you <laughs> go, ah, take a time out for yourself, put yourself in time out. I, I love that perspective. And I think because we, we are all so unique. I mean, God created us to be unique and we yeah. all have different perceptions, the way we perceive things, the way we absorb things. And sometimes like I'm one of those people, I have to process things for right. a little bit. Like I can't right. just take it in and, and respond immediately. I have to process it. So I think we we also have to give that that grace to our right. partner if they do start to, you know, not be able to have those conversations. Like my husband thinks so much faster than I think. I have right. to really process. And it's not a matter of intelligence. It's just how our brains work. And I think we have to give ourselves that grace to recognize that, but then also explain like, and, and on the flip side of that, help understand that, okay, they may not be processing this the same way I am. So we need to come to an agreement and how we're going to talk about things or how we're going to approach things so that it can be on an even playing field and not rushed and inconsiderate. Right, right. And I do need to say what happens in a timeout. <laughs> so in a timeout, um, for some people, it's good for them to write because they can see things mm-hmm. through, you know? Some people are good at drawing. You know, I get so upset, I draw, whatever. Um, others, maybe they need to talk it out, but they need to talk it or verbally vomit, but not in front of your partner, whether you go in your car, in the garage, <laughs> closet. talk to yourself, closet. <laughs> Yes, yeah. And then some people need to burn off energy, whether they need to go run, you know, to feel so much better now. I can really, you know, sit down and talk or whatever. And of course, it's good to uh, meditate, you know, to just sit there and and meditate. You got to find out what's good for you, whether it's it's watering the plants because you have beautiful plants there. You've got to find out what's good for you in your time out so you can show up and be fully present and having that conversation. And that is part of intimacy. Yeah. I This has been such a great conversation. This is so fun. I love it. And I love that you've given us really solid examples and strategies on how to approach conversations that are difficult to have, difficult to start. Um, but also to approach that intimacy level, especially sexual relationships around being more playful. You know, I I read one time, and or maybe it was we had a one of my guests was on, and she is like a alcohol free coach. So she talks about how you go alcohol free. And then I had right. and um another person came on and said how she had gone alcohol free and how her sex life and everything was so much better because she was so much they were just so much more in the moment. Is there a negative effect from alcohol on on a sexual relationships? I mean obviously it can change performance, I know like yes but yes. from a from a like if someone's anxious about it or someone what what is that effect? I would love to loop that in and then and link back to the other episodes where this was talked about a little bit. Okay, so when it comes to alcohol, alcohol can sometimes become a third party in a relationship. Okay, how this works is um, a person, whether they're sad, mad, anxious, doesn't or whatever the case may be, instead of going to their partner to connect, they go to the alcohol. Okay. Okay. So let's say it's Miss Jen. They go to Miss Jen <laughs> and they consume Miss Jen. Okay. 
And maybe in the beginning when they were 20, you know, it was a threesome. Now they're 50 and they're consuming all this gin, Miss Jen. But Miss Jen gets in here and sometimes doesn't like the partner. It's like a, a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So when it comes into the bedroom, um, maybe it's like it knocks the guy out that, you know, it's already had Miss Jen. <laughs> the wife is, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Or you can't really perform because there is um, that that blockage there. That's why I say it's a third party in a relationship, you know? And there's I've met women or people who have never really had a, been truly making love to their partner because they've always had something blocking. They can't really feel. Um, alcohol is also um, a depressant. So it's not gonna um, have you truly feel that um, connection. It's gonna stop you from being vulnerable, which is why I haven't used that word yet, but it's what really is necessary. So um, for many people, you know, they don't like the term of being um, labeled as an alcoholic and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't approach it that way, but when I approach it with a couple, I approach it as a third party. You know, like if you're struggling, because sometimes with alcohol, you um, if you've been drinking for many years, you can't just stop because you can mm -hmm. die. There's, there's, yeah. But if you, as a couple, if you approach it as a third party, you can approach it together to figure out how can we um, let go of this and not bring it in the bedroom. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. that makes total sense. Yeah, I think that's with everything, right? Like even right. even with work, that alcohol could become a third party. So yeah, yes. I'll, link, I'll link those episodes in um, the show notes so that listeners, you can go and learn more about that that too, yeah. since this episode wasn't necessarily specifically around alcohol, but I did want to bring that into play because I think there are a lot of people who will say, oh, I've got to have sex. I'm going to have a couple of drinks first so I can do it. And it's, I think it's the reverse psychology. It's like, that just takes away that, um, the presence, right. That you say right. has to be there. And because right. it's a depressant, then it, I'm, I'm like going through all this in my, in my scientific brain, <laughs> but because it's a depressant, then you're obviously not going to have as much joy at the same time. Right. Yeah. Right, right. And sometimes so, the, the third party like, doesn't like yeah, it. Gets in, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's too, it's like that that vulnerability. Um, it's it's better to accept vulnerability than to right. mask it with something. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that's hard. I think for a lot vulnerability is is a hard thing to um right. embrace. Right. And third parties in the bedroom, um, besides alcohol, it could also be the phone playing games. It's just a lot of different things. It could be video games, you know, any sense of addiction mm -hmm. that you go to that instead of your partner. Because um, remember, I said, especially for um, women and also for men, that emotional connection needs to be there. Mm -hmm. But if you go and you try to soak it into some other device, instead of your partner, it decreases intimacy completely. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay, this has been fabulous, Dr. April. Thank you so much for being here with us. Oh, um, you're welcome. How can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you, maybe even work with you if, they're, if they need help connecting with their, their spouse or even learning more about becoming more intimate with themselves or their relationship with, with Jesus? How, how do you... How yes, okay. Uh, they can find me on um, www.draprilbrown.com. Um, I provide counseling services. I have quizzes on, you know, for you to even do an assessment on how intimate you are with yourself or intimate with your partner. And I provide retreats and a variety of different things and books. So please, yes, reach out to me. And you have several books as well. And I know one is on specifically on intimacy with your partner. I think I saw on your website, right? I mean, it's like an intimacy series, right? Right. It's an intimacy series with your partner, with your higher partner, with your children, with um, business, and of course, with the community. Yeah, I love that. And your message is bringing intimacy back. So listeners, I hope that you found this discussion helpful, because I think that 
we do so often lose intimacy with ourselves and our spouses because of all of the distractions we have. So hopefully you found a few action items that you can go and implement some strategies for increasing that communication line with your spouse and really start to feel better and more confident, not only in the bedroom, but in your business. So Dr. April, thank you. And listeners, if you found this information helpful, please share it. Let's face it, as women, we all have girl talk. And if you've had a friend say that they're experiencing some of these things, share this episode with them, spread the word, and we can help together. We can help create that ripple effect of good in the world. And if you'd be so kind to leave a rating or review, I would be forever grateful. All right, that's it for this week. I'll see you all next week. And thanks so much for being here.